As we are all aware, there have been a lot of other issues that have come up in and around the game of football, started perhaps by Colin Kaepernick in a conversation that has continued. Herman, I still uh, remain so moved by the conversation that you and I had about this about a week and a half ago. Doug Baldwin has emerged, I feel, as one of the real leaders in this conversation, seemed to be the leader of the Seattle Seahawks and the way they handled mm-hmm. the pregame ceremonies on Sunday uh, as they locked arms during the anthem over the course of the weekend. And so we're thrilled to be able to bring Doug Baldwin here and continue the conversation on Mike and Mike again with Coach Herman in the studio as well. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, fellas. Uh, we very much appreciate the time. and Obviously, we will talk about the game and, and all of that, but let's start with the decisions that were made leading up to it. As I was following you and many were on social media. Can you take us through the conversations that you and your teammates had uh, and the coaching staff or whomever else may have been involved uh, that led you from wherever it was the discussions began to where you wound up on Sunday? Yeah, it was really simple for us. We just, you know, obviously um, Kaepernick started the conversation, um, not only in our locker room, but across the country. And we felt compelled to want to do something. You know, we didn't know specifically what, but we felt like, you know, we wanted to do something. And, um, you know, we felt uh, convicted about it, and there was, a, you know, a push of conversation in the locker room, and 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 really just a bunch of guys listening to each other tell stories about things that they've been through, about their life experiences, uh, and we came to the conclusion that we were going to do something, and whatever we did was we were going to do it together as a team. Doug, when did that start? So, so Colin Kaepernick sits for when he first does it. The next day, when you're with your team, did conversations start immediately about the possibility of doing something? Were there those that were against what he did, for what he did? What happened immediately after that? Immediately after, it was just simple conversation, just like anybody else. You know, just uh, having conversation like you'd be at the water cooler, and, and that's all it was. You know, and it, and it transformed into. Um, players going more in depth, you know, the, despite the stereotypes that's out there about athletes, you know, we have a lot of intellectual human beings in our locker room, um, and we discuss various topics, including this one, and there's no different. And so this one obviously resonated with a lot of guys in the locker room, and we wanted to discuss it. And so it was bas- what started it off was basically just a simple discussion. Hey, Doug, this is Coach Herman. Uh, appreciate having you on, my friend. Um, I, you know, with Pete being the, being the head coach, I know as a team you guys discussed that this is what you guys wanted to do. Where, where is Pete in all this? Did you have any conversations uh, with the head coach as well? Of, co- of course. Pete's right there with us. You know, we, uh, I specifically told Pete that, um, you know, this was going to be a player-led thing and that, you know, I needed his help and his support to – initiate the conversation um, he gave us time in, in team meetings he gave us an hour on Thursday to discuss it to hash out what we were going to do um, and all the, the the opinions that we had and so he was he was very instrumental in us getting this together and uh, couldn't be happier and, and more thankful for him did it go higher than that even Doug did you did you go higher did you go to management ownership did you how far up the ladder did you go of telling people what you were going to do uh, well, that that part was where I needed Pete's help. You know, he he had to relay the message to to uh, to Paul to Paul Allen, and he did that for us. So, um, you know, we all of us we we have a pretty decent relationship with our with our coaching staff and with the the uh, the front office, the general manager John Snyder. So, you know, they were all on board. They uh, they understood the gravity of uh, of our conversations and the team meetings, um, and they let us. Um, coordinate that accordingly and mike and mike and doug baldwin of the seahawks i'm just curious what role did your former teammate nate boyer play in this as well for those who don't know he has been something of an advisor to colin mm-hmm. kaepernick he's a former green beret and a former nfl player and again was on your team what what conversations did you have with him yeah uh we had great conversations and more so was just listening again you know listening to um, other perspectives and that's simply what it was discussion him telling us uh you know, the people that he's talked to, obviously the, the conversations that he's had with Colin and other people, um, and we just listened to his to his input, you know, and ultimately it didn't really matter what everybody else was saying. We had to come to an agreement as a team. Um, but, of course, we wanted to get all, all the input, all the information, all the knowledge that we could before we made our decision. Uh, Doug, one more on this. We want to get to the game. But but with all of this, the, the, the question is always, you know, where does it go? And what do you have to say to the people that, 
don't even want to get to the conversation because they don't like the actions of kneeling or sitting during the national anthem. So they're not even starting the conversation. And where does the conversation go? Well, if if those people um, are willing to to listen now, you know we greatly appreciate that. You heard us. You saw us. Whether it was taking a knee, whether it was locking arms in unity, whatever it was, <clears throat> you saw us. Now we're asking you to listen. And where does it go from here? We have a lot of things that, that we're trying to implement. Um, essentially, right now, at this present time, we're gathering all, all the information that we can. You know, we don't know what we don't know. And so we're, we're trying to figure it out. And then we're going to implement protocols or, or a process to gather that information, put it together, and formulate a plan. And so there is a follow-through. There is definitely a plan to, to moving forward. Um, you know, the... the the thing that, that inspires me is that the reason why we're in the greatest country in the world is because we've, we've never been afraid to face challenges before. We've never been afraid to make the uncommon the norm. Um, and, yeah, there's always been some pushback. There's always been some opposition to that. But ultimately, love prevailed. Um, and so that's what we're looking forward to. Doug, Coach Erm again, and, and, you know, growing up in the 60s, um, I really appreciate what, what some of the guys in the league are, are doing for social change. Uh, but, but I think that early I, I worried about this is that because of, uh, you know, media, media was more concerned with the protest rather than listening to what you guys had to say. And I think that's the critical part now going forward. It's more of the message you have to deliver rather than the protest. You know, everyone was uh, – every game started, you know, everybody's talking about, well, what are they going to do to protest rather than listen to what you guys are saying. So you guys got a platform. Uh, use it uh, because it, it's bigger than football, as you guys know. And I just appreciate what you guys are doing. I appreciate you saying that. But with that being said, um, I understand – uh, that mindset, and I understand the issue with with the kneeling. However, um, if Colin Kaepernick didn't do what he what he did, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So in that regard, you know, you got to appreciate and and understand that our perspective is not our own. There's different perspectives, and there's different opinions, and there's different actions. However, they all play a role in our society, and we got to utilize them not as hate, but as love and find an appreciation and a value in it. And so for me, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that we're having this conversation because eventually somebody's going to find a way to move the needle in the right direction. Doug Baldwin, wide, wide receiver for the Seahawks, joining us. Uh, and, and now let's go to the other platform that you're on, and that, that's the football field. And, boy, what a squeaker you guys had with the Miami Dolphins. And while a lot of people were maybe concerned, while wow, Russell Wilson had uh, the most attempts in his career – I would say you don't mind that, getting nine receptions out of all of that. So take us through that game and a little bit of a nerve-wracking game for the opening weekend. Yeah, a little rusty, obviously, in the beginning of the season, um, opening up for game one. But tip my hat to Miami. They had a great game plan defensively coming in. Uh, they got a great scheme over there, great players. And so, yeah, they gave us some things that, that we had to deal with. And fortunately enough, we've got a resilient team. The guys on our side of the ball are um, – extremely uh, talented and persevere and work hard through all those obstacles. And, and we were fortunate enough to come out there with a W. And, and it, you know, it doesn't make for bad t- television to win in the fashion which we did either. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, Doug, you know, it's kind of interesting because, uh, as you know, I, I've been in ball my whole life, and, and there's certain things that you take away when a team uh, does what you guys were able to do. You struggle at home. Uh, everyone projected you guys to, to beat Miami by two scores at least. But – Take us in the huddle, the mindset of the players, basically knowing that you're running out of time and you've already possessed the ball 11 times and you've been struggling. And, you know, in the huddle now, you're probably well aware that this could be our last possession of the football. Take, take the fans in the huddle, kind of the calmness, I think, that teams that know how to win and win in big moments. Take us in the huddle and give us some conversation that's going on when you guys go on a 14 play, what? drive 75 yards uh, to, 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 to score a touchdown? There was no conversation. Simply put, it was just focus on the task at hand, mm-hmm. focus on each play as we got the opportunity to go out there and execute it. You know, I think that we, we practice this every, every day. Every day we go out there and we practice a two-minute situation. We put ourselves in difficult situations where we're, we're behind at halftime or we're down towards the end of the game. Um, we put ourselves in those situations so when we get to a game mode, it's second nature for us. You know, it's, 
it's it's without conscious. We just go out there and we do it um, because we practice it so much. And so for us, you know, it, there was no conversation. We just we approached each play like it was a championship play, like it was a game winning play, because that's what we always do. And so when we get out there on the football field in game time, it's no different.